Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Todd Powell. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, Vacations by Rail to talk about national parks by rail. Uh, we're very excited to be able to talk to you about the national parks and how rail travel is a great way to uh, visit some of the United States' uh, most famous and scenic national parks. Um, just a little bit about Vacations by Rail. Uh, Vacations by Rail is the leader in rail vacations around the world and this year we're celebrating our 10th year in business. Uh, we're the preferred rail provider of AARP and we help customers choose between the wide variety of rail vacations that are out, uh, that are out there uh, in the United States, Canada, Europe and the rest of the world. So we're happy to talk to you a little bit about today about uh, travel in the United States and to the national parks, generally via Amtrak, and that's what we're going to talk about how Amtrak uh, can take you. Amtrak is a rail provider, uh, coupled with some of the uh, uh, coupled with these national parks, uh, really put together a nice vacation experience. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of rail travel, and we're going to talk about. Uh, how there's such a rich history uh, between the national parks and the railroads of yesteryear and and how today some of uh, these trains can still take you to the national parks as well as walk you through some well-planned national park train vacations because what I think you'll find is as we look through some of these itineraries you'll really be able to get an idea of how uh, train travel can get you to the national parks and how uh, we can get between some of those national parks through other modes of transportation. Before we get started, I'd like to just ask a polling question. We're going to do these from time to time. And the first one I'd like to know is, uh, have you ever taken a rail, a rail vacation? So we'll open up the polls right now. And if you can just respond uh, yes or no, that will help us uh, understand um, what, uh, how we should tailor this presentation to you. Okay, we'll close up the uh, we'll close up the poll, and it looks like um, more than uh, half have not taken a rail vacation. So I think you'll find that this will be a very nice presentation, the introduction to uh, rail travel and uh, and rail vacations generally. So let's talk briefly about uh, about the national parks before we go into um, before we go back into some of the tours. I'm going to give a couple of examples about railroads and national parks and its rich history that dates back to the to the 1800s. Um, three uh, three national parks in, in specifically are, are really tied to the railroads. Glacier Park uh, in in uh, 1891, the Great Northern Rail uh, Railway had crossed the Continental Divide along the southern boundary of what is now Glacier National Park, and the Great Northern Railroad saw that uh, this area. This spectacular scenic area was a great place for uh, for tourists to uh, visit, and so over time, as the uh, as Glacier Park uh, moved from a uh, forest preserve um, and protected lands to becoming a national park, uh, Glacier the Great Northern Railway invested in uh, the construction of hotels and chalets, and that helped generate tourism and gave people some additional purpose to travel their railroads. Now, uh, many of these properties that are still there are considered uh, national historic landmarks. Yellowstone National Park, uh, uh, the United States' first national park uh, in 1872, uh, was obviously um, uh, a, a really uh, a great natural experience and wonder for a lot of people with some of this, the geothermal activity that's happening there. And it became uh, the first national park and the Northern Pacific Railroad uh, had um, built some, uh, built a train station and, from Lip and some rail service out of Livingston, Montana uh, to West Glacier National Park. And again, to help spur visitors and to increase visitors to the park uh, and eventually um, it increased visitors from 300 people to 5,000 people using its rail service, um, rail service uh, to West Yellowstone. And West Yellowstone is a gateway to Yellowstone National Park. Uh, today, uh, that service has stopped. It stopped about 1960, and those rail lines have now been converted to natural trails. 
The Grand Canyon is another great example of a, of a, a national park uh, that has a rich connection to the railway. Uh, in 1901, the uh, Atkinson, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad Railway completed a branch line between Williams, uh, Arizona, and the Grand Canyon Village at the South Rim. The first, uh, the first, the first scheduled train carried pass paying passengers on the Grand Canyon Railway on September 17th of that year, 1901. It's about a 64-mile trip, and back then it cost only three dollars and ninety-five cents. And it was really a great way to uh, get to uh, get to the Grand Canyon. And today, you can still take the Grand Canyon Railway from Williams, Arizona, to the south rim of the canyon. And we'll talk to you about that a little bit, uh, a little bit later on in the presentation. So what we're going to do now is we're going to walk through, we're going to walk through one of the itineraries that we have. And I look at this as really sort of a, a great example of how the trains and the national parks uh, can uh, be connected. And our Glacier Park, Yellowstone Glacier Adventure Tour is an 11-day escorted tour that utilizes, um, utilizes two uh, scenic Amtrak trains uh, as well as motor coach traveling in between. And I think when you look at this map here, you'll get a better understanding of how you can take these trains, whether on an escorted tour or an independent tour, um, out of Chicago or Seattle or any of the stations in between to get to places like Glacier National Park to get to places like Salt Lake City where you can then uh, venture on to explore Grand Tetons and Yellowstone National Park. So let's take a look at the map. So here we have the map of, uh, that includes two Amtrak routes and then it includes uh, the various national parks and you'll see that a lot of the trips in the, that uh, Vacations by Rail offers uh, utilizes the California Zephyr and the Empire Builder and uh, a third route called the Southwest Chief which travels to this, uh, uh, on a more southerly route uh, down through Arizona on its way to Los Angeles and, and this, uh, these are the three main routes out of Chicago that can get you to some spectacular national parks. So let's take a look at the itinerary here. So on this particular 11-day tour, uh, what happens is people meet in Chicago generally. That's where the tour managers meet. And then they meet and they board Amtrak's California Zephyr. Amtrak's California Zephyr is, again, one of the more scenic routes in the uh, United States, including uh, going through uh, the Colorado Rockies. When you get to Denver, you climb the front range of the Rockies, you go through uh, a multitude of canyons, uh, go through Ruby Canyon as you go into Utah, Books Cliffs, and you arrive in Salt Lake City. Now, Salt Lake City is, uh, is a, a great, uh, great stopping point for a lot of people, and on this particular tour, it, um, it's ideal stopping point for us to start to venture up to, uh, up to Jackson, Wyoming, and to Yellowstone National Park and the Grand Tetons National Park. Um, the train gets here. It, it's uh, generally later in the evening. It's about 11 o'clock at night. On some of our tours, we also stop in Provo, Utah, which is a little bit east of that. Gets us in around 9, 9.30. And from here, on this escorted tour, uh, you spend a couple of nights in Salt Lake City, and then you go on to board a motor coach, uh, and you take the ride up to Jackson, Wyoming, where you spend a night in Jackson, Wyoming, and then you go into Yellowstone, and you stay in the park at Yellowstone National Park, and so you're going to do some touring of Grand Tetons National Park, Yellowstone National Park, and then another motor coach journey up to Glacier National Park get you to join up with the Empire Builder. And we'll talk about some of these destinations, but, but I think this is a great map that illustrates how the trains come out of Chicago and connect to these national parks. And when you look at this, you'll see that if you're doing an escorted tour, you're going to be with a group that's going to take you by motor coach. Um, but there's also car rentals available that people can do if they come into Salt Lake City. They can spend the night, do some sightseeing in Salt Lake City, pick up a car rental, drive up to Yellowstone National Park, spend some time up in Yellowstone National Park, come back down to Salt Lake City and either continue west on the California Zephyr uh, or come back, to, uh, come back to Chicago by heading east. So let's go and look at some of the highlights of this tour. And we can, 
uh, look at some of the places you'll see, and you want to keep these in mind when you're thinking about an independent trip or an escorted trip. Now, on the escorted trips, you're going to be getting a tour manager on board throughout the entire journey. Meals will be included in places such as the mural room, uh, and you'll do touring of Salt Lake City, uh, Grand Tetons National Park, going to the Sun Road, and, but when you're on your own, you'll have a car rental and you'll have some vouchers that will allow you to do some of these, uh, some of these sightseeing as well. So we're going to hop on uh, into the, a little bit more in depth of this tour so that you can see how um, once you get to these destinations, some of the places that you'll see, and then we'll also look at um, some other tours that will give you some additional ideas on the types of rail vacations that are out there. So let's move on to let's move on to the California Zephyr, which we talked about, and the California Zephyr uh, is the train that's going to take you to begin your tour, and this trip between Chicago and Salt Lake City, it's about 34 hours on the train. So you leave in the afternoon out of Chicago, uh, you spend overnight as you cross, as you start, you're having dinner as you cross the Mississippi, and you go into Iowa, Nebraska, and it starts to be, it's nighttime, you get into the morning, you're in Denver, and that's when you climb into the front range of the Rockies. It's a pretty dramatic sight when you're going and you're and you're uh, seeing the front range of the Rockies, and then you're following the you're following the uh, Colorado River through the Colorado Rockies. So the California Zephyr, it's an iconic train, and the California Zephyr will take you to Salt Lake City, or if you continue going, it's going to take you all the way to San Francisco. There's a couple of different options on this train. You have a coach car, which is coach seating. Coach seating is. Um, the coach seating are just airline style seats um, that recline. They allow you to move around the train. They give you access to they give you access to the um, sightseeing lounge car meals uh, you would pay for if you're on an independent trip and the dining car. If you're on an escorted tour, we include those meals as well as we uh, as well as access to the to the uh, snack car and. So it gives you a nice, uh, nice, comfortable seat and allows you to explore the train. But if you really want to have the most comfortable experience when you're on any long distance train, you're going to want to look at a, a sleeping compartment on, on an Amtrak train or any uh, overnight train that you consider. It really enhances your experience and there's something, uh, there's a true romance to the rails when you have your own private sleeping compartment. You go and you, um, you you're able to shut the door, have some, have a, have a private room somewhere to escape to. Uh, you can then uh, your meals are included on the train. You go to the dining car. Um, you have access to the sightseeing lounge car. And there's two types of uh, two main types of sleeping accommodations on an Amtrak train, whether it be the California Zephyr, the Empire, the Empire Chief, uh, the Empire Builder, uh, the Southwest Chief, or the Coast Starlight, or any of the other Amtrak long distance trains. You essentially have a roomette, which are two seats that face each other and convert to an upper and lower berth at night. And you also have a bedroom accommodation. A bedroom is a larger room, has an in-room uh, sink, toilet, and uh, shower. Um, and they have a sofa-style seat and a sitting chair opposite the sofa-style seat. So if we're looking at this picture here, this would be um, more of a bedroom accommodation, whereas a roomette are just the two seats facing each other that convert to the upper and lower berth at night. So if you really want to enhance any rail experience that you have, if it's an overnight train, uh, we encourage people to consider the sleeping accommodations because it, it, it really provides more of a uh, first class experience when, uh, when taking any sort of overnight train. There's a sightseer lounge on the train. These are, as you can see from this particular picture, these are um, these are uh, larger larger windows uh, with curved glass on the top and um, provides a nice panoramic view. Uh, there's chairs that people can uh, uh, can sit in. There, uh, it's a, on a first come first serve basis, but it's always a great um, it's always a great experience to go to the to the sightseer lounge, meet people. And, and see the scenery.
There's also a dining car on board Amtrak uh, and other long distance trains. The, um, the dining service on board uh, Amtrak, they have a separate dining car. If you have your sleeping, if you have sleeping accommodations, your meals are included. So you get uh, meals on board the train, breakfast, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, if you're on one of our escorted tours and you're in coach class, we include those as well. Uh, but if you're in coach class on the train, you, uh, you would pay for your meals. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that people on, uh, in the sleeping accommodations get um, first, uh, first reservations and people in coach class get the later dining spots. And, and, uh, but for me, one of the really uh, great uh, pleasures on a, a long distance train is when you wake up in the morning and you go down and you have some coffee and breakfast in a, in a dining car. It really is a, it's really a, it's really a great experience and you have the scenery that's moving by. It's, it's like, uh, it's just like having, you know, uh, moving, moving artwork. So as you go through the itinerary for the Yellowstone Glacier Adventure, some of the things you'll see, for example, in, <laughs> excuse me, in uh, Salt Lake City is, is Temple Square and um, the Mormon Temple at, uh, Mormon Temple, which is the centerpiece of Salt Lake City's Temple Square, and it has the six fires, and it's a, and it's a temple for the Church of Latter Day Saints. Uh, at more than uh, 253,000 uh, 253, square feet, feet, it is the largest uh, uh, temple by floor area, and it took 40 years to complete. So these are one of the places that you can uh, visit when you're uh, in Salt Lake City, uh, and one of the places that you stop by when you're on one of the escorted tours. Uh, there's also Utah's Capitol. Uh, it's another another place that you can you can see when you're in Salt Lake City. Uh, built uh, between 1912 and 1916, this building was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1978. Uh, fun fact here: in the uh, movie *Legally Blonde 2*, uh, *Red, White, and Blonde*, the Utah State Capitol was actually used for the exterior and interior shots for the U.S. Capitol. The Grand Tetons Mountains. So now once you leave Salt Lake City, uh, you're really getting into some phenomenal, uh, phenomenal scenery, just some spectacular, spectacular views. You see the Grand Tetons Mountain, Mountains when you're, heading, when you're heading north out of Salt Lake, uh, Salt Lake City and in Jackson, Wyoming. Uh, the Grand Teton is the highest point of the Teton Range and the second highest peak in Wyoming. Uh, the mountain range raises over, rises to over 13,000 feet in the air without any foothills. And it truly is a dramatic scene, uh, dramatic scene uh, particularly when you're at the, uh, uh, having uh, lunch in the mural room. Uh, you'll, it, this is just like, imagine this whole, this whole range of, of mountains just right outside the window. It's just a, it's an amazing sight. So um, get your cameras ready, particularly as you get into this part of the country. Uh, other parts, you, other, other stops along the way, the Chapel of Transfiguration. Uh, uh, this is a small log cabin in Grand uh, Teton National Park. It was built to frame the view of the mountain peaks seen through the large windows behind the altar. So when you go in this small temple, um, this small chapel, uh, when you open up, uh, there's just some, there's some, some seating, some pew areas, and there is a window right behind the altar, and it has a, a cross behind it, and you're looking straight out um, through at the mountains. And it, it really is a... It really is quite amazing when you're in this and you see the, this window that's uh, framing the mountains. The chapel was built in 1925 to serve guests and employees of the Dude Ranches along the Teton Range. So this is one of the stops you would see uh, along the way when you're on an escorted tour. But it's definitely, if you're on one of our independent tours, you're traveling uh, by car up from from uh, Salt Lake City uh, to Jackson, Wyoming, and into the Grand Tetons, it's definitely a place that you want to stop at and... and uh, Take a look. Coulter Bay, another great place to stop as you're as you're going through um, as you're going through uh, Grand Teton National Park. It's located on the northeast side of Jackson Lake, and the develop there's a development there that includes, among other things, a visitor center and a marina. So um, an, another an, another great place to take some uh, photographs and relax and uh, just take in the view because this is what these trips are all about when you go to the national parks. From there we go up to Yellowstone National Park. And Yellowstone National Park is uh, kind of the granddaddy of them all, United States' first national park. 
Uh, it just has those iconic um, geothermal activity uh, uh, geysers like, um, like Old Faithful. Uh, it was christened the United States First National Park in eight, uh, 1872. It has more than 290 waterfalls, deep canyons, lakes, and rivers, majestic mountain ranges, and more than 1,700 species of plants and trees, as well as one of the largest petrified forests in the world. Uh, but it is really best known for its geo uh, geothermal activity, including the geysers. Uh, one thing I, I can tell you from uh, my own experience is that you know, when you're there, uh, you know, you want to get up early and see how the geo geothermal activity really uh, comes alive uh, in the morning because you have the cooler, the cooler air, and so you get a lot of the a lot of the steam and mist, and and it really is uh, it really kind of gives you an idea of of the activity that you the geothermal activity throughout the park, and the park really really comes alive in the in the in that morning time. Other stops along the way, uh, the fountain paint pots. Uh, this is a fountain paint pot. is a famous uh, mud pot located in the lower geyser basin of the of the park. It's named for its red, yellows, and brown colors in the mud, which come from the different uh, oxidation states of the iron in the mud. So uh, you know you see these different uh, these these different uh, mud uh, mud pots, and 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 this particular one, which is very famous, uh, and it's just. The, the park itself is just has so much variation in in the in the different types of geothermal activity and on top of that then you get to to go experience um, when you're at the park one of the um, the uh, Grand Canyon of, uh, of Yellowstone which is has some spectacular falls you have the upper geyser, geyser basin um, in the upper geyser basin which is uh, old faithful geyser is the most famous attraction located in the, in the in the park located in the upper geyser base, uh, basin. Uh, while Old Faithful may be the most famous geyser in the park, Steamboat Geyser is the world's tallest active geyser and it can be seen in the uh, Norse Geyser Basin and it's the hottest and oldest thermal area in the park. And these are places that when you go uh, to explore the park you're going to want to put on your list to see. From Yellowstone if you're, uh, a lot of people, what they'll do when they go from, uh, when they go from uh, on an independent trip, they'll take the California Zephyr to Salt Lake City. They pick up their car rental and they go to um, Yellowstone National Park, Grand Teton National Park, and then they come back down and they drop their car off in Salt Lake City again, and then take the train from, take the train from uh, Salt Lake City on westward to. California, or they turn around and they come back from uh, to Chicago. Uh, there's also some people have the option where if they're short on time, they may pick up a, a flight out of Salt Lake City and return uh, to their home uh, by flight. Uh, we obviously recommend taking the train. Um, the uh, but if you're on an escorted tour, uh, what you'll do is you then go from uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, the motor coach takes a takes a trip up to uh, Glacier National Park. A Glacier National Park is is uh, is an amazing park, open only about a hundred days out of the year. Uh, at, at least experience things like the Going to the Sun Highway. Uh, these things, such as the um, such as the uh, Red Jammer, the Red Jammer buses uh, on the Going to the Sun Road. Uh, now these are these are uh, when you're there. These are the actual types of buses that will take you on the Going to the Sun Highway. Uh, this is the only road that travels over the Continental Divide at Logan's Pass and in the heart of Glacier National Park. Uh, the road was created to provide greater access into the park for visitors traveling by car and it was completed in 1932 and it was named for the nearby Going to the Sun Mountains and was later designated as a National Historic Civil Engineering Landmark. Um, it can be uh, exploring the crown of the continent is one of the most beautiful parts of the park and it's really made easier aboard these red jammers and it's a restored fleet of these 1930s open air red tour buses so as you can see uh, and I'm just going to circle this right here so that everybody can kind of get an idea this particular this is a canvas uh, top that gets rolled back so if it uh, when the weather's when the weather's nice it gets rolled back and you just have this spectacular open air open air uh, scene as you're traveling on these historic historic buses. Now um, the buses were called jammers because 
Uh, there was a time when they had a manual transition and they actually had to jam them into gear. Uh, now they've been restored and they have a more automatic transmissions. And um, But they still call them jammers and also uh, the, the drivers uh, who are taking these are very experienced on the road, which is a which is a windy road, and and they also have some amazing commentary uh, when you're taking these trips so, uh, on the going to the Sun Road. From there, generally, uh, you end up going to Lake McDonald, which is uh, which is one of the it's a 10 mile long and uh, more than a mile wide. It's the largest lake in Glacier National Park. Uh, the water in, in, in this lake in particular and other lakes in Glacier National Parks, it's exceptionally clear water, making the reflection of surrounding mountains uh, just really quite amazing. So if you're a photographer, uh, it makes it for some amazing photos. And if you're, if you're just uh, enjoy snapping photos with, uh, uh, with your phone, you're still going to get some, some amazing pictures because it's, it's almost like you can't take a bad picture when you're in these, in these national park areas particularly in Glacier National Park with, with the way the water uh, and the mountains come together. There's Swift Current Lake in Glacier National Park. There's another lake you'll go uh, by that's uh, Swift Current Lake is located in the, in the Many Glacier region of Glacier National Park. Uh, there's a historic hotel, the Many Glacier Hotel, which is the largest hotel in the park. It sits along the shores of this lake. And if you're on this trip, um, with, uh, uh, with the escorts or if you're doing one of our independent trips that take, for example, the Empire Builder up to Glacier National Park, uh, you have some time to, to see these. And if you're on one of the independent trips, we include a, uh, a boat ride on Swift Current Lake that takes you across and then there's a short hike. I myself have, uh, have done the hike around the lake and it is, it's, a, it's just an amazing, amazing, uh, amazing hike, you'll, you'll see wildlife uh, around and um, yeah, it, it just, again, you can't take any bad, uh, bad pictures here if you're, if you're into photography like I am. So once you, once you uh, take, once you, t uh, on the Yellowstone Glacier Adventure, if you're taking the tour from uh, Yellowstone Glacier Adventure, you're going Chicago, California Zephyr, to uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, motor coaching up to uh, Jackson, uh, Grand Teton Yellowstone National Park, then on to, on to the uh, Glacier National Park up in Montana. And that's when you'll board the Empire Builder. The Empire Builder uh, is, is the train that goes between Chicago and uh, Seattle or Portland. And it stops right during the, during the summer months, it stops right at East Glacier Park Station. And East Glacier Park Station is right in front of the uh, Glacier Park Lodge. And the Glacier Park Lodge sends one of these, uh, uh, sends, sends a car to pick people up and transfer them over to the lodge, although it's a short walk. It's, it's really just a, a block and a half. And when you get off the train, you see the Glacier Park, uh, the, the, the Glacier Park Lodge, which is an amazing log. Uh, uh, log. Uh, log Lodge, and um, you know you walk, you can walk right over there, but they're there to help you out with your luggage and get you there, uh, get you into your uh, settle into your room. And uh, from here, again, if you're if you're on one of the one of the tours, like the Yellowstone Glacier Adventure, or some of our other tours, uh, such as uh, Western Treasures and Natural Wonders, or uh, America's Great National uh, National Parks, uh, you have that. Uh, that stop right at East Glacier, and then um, if, if you're beginning or ending a tour and you want to meet up in Glacier, if the tour is starting in Chicago and you want to start in Seattle, uh, that's no problem, or if the tour is returning to Chicago and you want to return to Seattle or Portland, that's no problem either. It can all be, uh, all be arranged for you. So we're, what we're going to do now is we've talked about a couple of, uh, we've, we've walked you through the Yellowstone and Glacier adventure uh, Tour, which again, as I mentioned, is uh, really kind of a great um, foundation for what we're going to talk about next. Because as you can see, we're going to be talking about trains that had uh, that leave generally from Chicago, which is a, a major uh, uh, the major gateway for um, Amtrak trains heading uh, heading west, and and you'll see that that from here, it's really about connecting these trains uh, with the other national parks and. Uh, putting them together in a in a in a well-planned manner so that you can have the best experience. 
So we're going to walk through a couple of the other tours that we offer. We'll talk about some of the highlights, but then I'll also talk as we're going through that about how you can um, do, these, uh, uh, do aspects of these on an independent level if you're an independent traveler, or talk to you about how the groups handle uh, some of these, uh, some of these uh, connecting transportation through um, uh, while they're on tour. Before we start, though, I'm going to uh, ask one more polling question. Uh, because Vacations by Rail is the uh, preferred, uh, preferred rail provider for AARP, I'd like to get an idea of how many of you are, are an AAR, AARP member. So if you, I'll just leave this poll open for just a second. And if you could let me know, that would be great. And then uh, we will move on to, um, uh, to the rest of the tours. And at the end, we'll do a, uh, we'll do a, um, we will do a, a couple of question and answer, uh, a couple of question and answer sessions. So you can uh, post your questions online using uh, the the webinar tool, and then we will answer a few of those uh, as we wrap up the wrap up the presentation. Okay, so we'll close out this poll. Uh, we see a lot of you uh, are AAR pem AARP members, and that's great because you know Vacations by Rail is a preferred rail provider for AARP, offers member benefits that are not available through anybody else when it comes to rail, rail travel. We uh, offer a member benefit of 5% off the base uh, package of any of the trips that we offer. We, um, and, and that goes for the tours in the United States, our trips in Canada, and other parts of the world. So. Um, we encourage you to go online, and I'm going to show you our website right at the end to show you how, it, how easy it is to navigate, and you can uh, easily sort uh, by these national park tours and just be able to browse the different national park trips uh, easily through our website, uh, vacationsbyrail.com. Okay, so let's talk, uh, let's move back on to uh, other popular train vacations. This trip, America's Beautiful West is uh, an uh, amazingly popular trip for us. Uh, this year we're, uh, we offer two departures on it and it's, it's, um, uh, they're, they're selling out already this year. And, and I, I think what people really love about this particular trip is that it, <laughs> excuse me, it takes you all the way out uh, to San Francisco and hits places like Yosemite National Park, Grand Canyon, and, uh, and get you into, into the, into the San Francisco Bay Area, which is a, is a great destination driver for a lot of people. Uh, this particular trip includes round-trip transportation on Amtrak. That's two nights on the train. So you can see uh, when you look at these, and these maps are pretty standard on our website. And again, as we talk about these, you, know, you can look and see how these, uh, how these particular, uh, how, how the maps work. So here it is telling you you have one night on the train in each direction. You have the, uh, this trip starts out going uh, from Chicago down to Flagstaff. So you're in this this route here that we're talking about right here is the Southwest Chief. So that's uh, one of the three routes that are really uh, westbound, uh, east-west routes out of Chicago. As we talked about, here's the California Zephyr. And if we were to continue this way, that's where you would go uh, on the Empire Builder. So that gives you an idea of of, of how these routes work. And um, and how sometimes to get to these national parks in between, you need to have an alternate uh, type of transportation. So on this particular trip, you're going to do the overnight train, and you're going to end up in Flagstaff for two nights. Uh, the night you arrive, and then you'll do sightseeing, and then you're going to go on to uh, Grand Canyon, and then uh, see the Grand Canyon, which is one of the seven wonders of the world. It's just, it's, uh, and do some, uh, have a guided tour of the south rim of the canyon. From there, uh, you're on a motor coach now, and you motor coach up to Las Vegas. Um, contrary to a lot of people's belief, there is not any rail service to Las Vegas. Uh, at one point years ago, there was, uh, was some uh, rail service to Las Vegas, but not any longer. So the only way to really get there is by, um, when you're on a, on a rail trip, is by a motor coach uh, or, or car rental. From there, you go uh, to Bakersfield, where you board the San Joaquin, which is going to take you up to Merced. Uh, San Joaquin up to Merced, where then you spend the night and you go to explore Yosemite National Park. Again, motor coach into San Francisco. You spend uh, some time in San, uh, motor coach up to, to uh, Sacramento. Do such things as the, uh, uh, you have a little bit of time in San Francisco. Uh, there's a great railway museum in San Francisco. And then you go on to San Francisco for a couple of nights. And then the interesting part about the way we have this one particular structured is that you take the train from San Francisco to Elko, 
and then you're off the train. And this is uh, the California Zephyr route, which is really great. You're going through the Sierra Nevada mountains, following the Truckee River, Downers Pass, you end up in Elko, Nevada, and now you're off on a motor coach and you're doing some touring to Salt Lake City, and you'll board the train again in Price, where then you get to do uh, the uh, Colorado Rockies by rail overnight back to Chicago. So uh, a great way to experience it, uh, part of the country and see a lot of it by daylight. So we'll move on to the next itinerary, and we're going to walk through these maps. I'm going to do them relatively quickly because I think you're, you're going to kind of get the head, feel for how these work because there, there are a limited number of routes in the United States and you'll be able to uh, get a feel for how you can connect these up with, uh, with, the, um, with, uh, with the Amtrak trains in the national parks. This particular trip, canyons, glaciers, and waterfalls. Now this is different than, um, than some of the uh, some of the other trips we've looked at so far. So the trips that we've looked at thus far have been escorted tours. Vacations by rail escorted tours uh, uh, generally go out with uh, about uh, 40, 45 people. Uh, they include a host, uh, host uh, uh, tour, tour manager. Um, they include uh, a, a number of meals, uh, up to 17, uh, 17 or 22 meals, depending on the itinerary. Um, and uh, motor coach driver, luggage handling, and so forth. This is the first one we're looking at that is a, an independent tour. And this is a rail journey that takes, in, uh, that takes in three of the U.S. famed national parks aboard three renowned Amtrak trains. And again, this is a great slide that represents the various long-distance trains heading westbound that incorporate, uh, that incorporate um, Amtrak, Amtrak trains and national parks. So. Let me just clear up these, uh, see if we can get this. Okay, so now keep in mind on these, on these independent trips, you can start anywhere you'd like along these routes, right? Because if you're somewhere in between Glacier National Park and Chicago, let's say you're in uh, Minneapolis and you want to start in Minneapolis, it's not a problem because Amtrak trains are running once per day along these routes. So uh, if you start midway through, it's just going to be starting uh, just in a different place. So different, uh, just changing the itinerary up slightly. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's not a big deal for our agents to handle that and customize it how you need. But we're going to take it from Chicago. So again, here we have Amtrak's, um, Am Amtrak's Southwest Chief. So if we were to take it here, we have an overnight train. This is about 30, uh, 30 hours or so, um, 32 hours to Williams, Arizona. Williams, Arizona is the the spot where you get off the train to take the Grand Canyon Railway to the south rim of the canyon. As you remember uh, earlier on in the presentation, we talked about how the Grand Canyon Railway is, in fact, uh, uh, was built to take people to the south rim of the canyon, and I mentioned you can still do this today. And what happens is you get off at Williams, Arizona, and a uh, shell comes and picks you up at, uh, at Williams Junction, essentially, is the stop, and it takes you into Williams where you would spend a night at the Grand Canyon Railway Hotel. The next morning you get up, they generally have, they have a Wild West shootout uh, outside the hotel, and then they take you on this, uh, this journey to the south rim of the canyon. It's about a 64-mile journey to the south rim of the canyon on some uh, historic rail cars. There's a various uh, types of... Uh, levels of, of service you can have on that from a dome car uh, to bud class with air conditioning to the coach class to a first class. So there's a couple of different options for you. Uh, and you then spend two nights at the Maswick Lodge, which is at the South Rim, uh, the Grand Canyon Village, the South Rim. Uh, you includes a sightseeing tour. And then you come back to Williams, and as we're going to continue to head west, you come back to Williams uh, in the in the afternoon, and then the train comes through at nine o'clock. The uh, Southwest Chief picks you up for an overnight train right into Los Angeles, where you spend a couple of nights. Uh, you do a hop on hop off tour, gives you enough time to kind of get a f uh, flavor for LA. Um, if you want to keep this this uh, journey as you keep moving along, and then you board Amtrak's Coast Starlight. Coast Starlight goes all the way up to Seattle, but the way we have it broken up is that you go along this portion here. Um, essentially between L.A. and about San Luis Obispo, it's about 113, 113 miles, 112, 113 miles right along the coast of California. It's really spectacular because at times it's just the coastline 
and the tracks going. So you have this amazing, amazing view of the Pacific Ocean as you're heading up into up into the northern, uh, more of the northern California region, and then you get into you move inland around San Luis Obispo, and then you arrive in Emeryville, which is the stop where Amtrak stops, and they have a they have a connecting service that takes you down to San Francisco. Spent a couple of nights in San Francisco doing a little sightseeing and taking in that the wonderful city by the bay, and then overnight train through the Cascade Mountains up to Seattle to the Pacific Northwest. Um, you could extend this trip here. We have one night built in so that you can then connect to the Empire Builder, go on to Glacier National Park, do it in the summertime, and you can do the going to the Sun Road, spend the time at Glacier National Park, and then take the train back to Chicago. But like I said, let's say you started in Minneapolis, uh, no problem. You uh, can just get off there as well. This particular trip to do this whole itinerary is 17 days. But uh, we use this, you know, there, there are people who, who want to do this, spend more time on the trains, taking the country that way. And what, uh, but I use this again as a great example of how these trains all connect together and get you to some of these fabulous national parks. So on this trip, we're going to be doing uh, the Grand Canyon, Yosemite, and Glacier National Park. So um, you can really see how you can hit some of uh, some of the uh, the iconic national parks just by taking uh, taking the train in the United States. So let's uh, let's move on. I can show you a couple more itineraries, and then we will be uh, taking some uh, taking some uh, some questions. Let me see. I think I might have one more polling question here. Um, I'll ask that one at the end because we're really uh, trying to trying to give you an idea of which uh, trains go where, and so we'll ask you one of these questions later. I'm going to talk to you now about the Grand Canyon Rails to the Rim. This is an independent trip as well, as you, uh, and I think it drills down a little more into what we just looked at, which was the uh, Canyons, Glaciers, and Waterfall trip. Um, the Canyons, Glacier, and Waterfall trip, as you remember, goes to William, Arizona. What this trip does is it's just for the Grand Canyon. It's a, uh, a six-day tour, and it leaves out of Chicago. It goes from Chicago to uh, Williams, Arizona. I'm the Southwest Chief. Uh, you get sh you get picked up, and if you're going to do a round trip, um, what you're going to do is if you're doing round trip Chicago, you're going to spend the first night in Williams, Arizona. The next morning, you get up historic Grand Canyon Railway to the south rim of the canyon, uh, and it really is spectacular because when you when you when you get off at the station of the Grand Canyon. Uh, you're down a little bit, right? Your 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 steps down below, so you can't really see the the rim uh, from where you're at. And when you take these stairs up from the Grand Canyon uh, Depot, uh, you're right at the Altamar Hotel, uh, which was one of the hotels built um, built by the Santa Fe Railway um, when they put this line in for uh, uh, the 64 mile line. So it really is pretty neat when you walk up those stairs, and then you're going to take in the Grand Canyon. You do a rim tour. You spend the night. So you have. Uh, about a day, uh, one overnight, I told about uh, 20, 20 plus hours at the canyon. You take an afternoon train back to Williams. Uh, you spend the night, uh, and you get up early morning. Uh, it's about uh, 5 a.m. or so, and then you board the Southwest Chief, or the Southwest Chief, which is now coming from Los Angeles, if you remember that map, on the return, and it's going to take you back to Chicago. So a great, a great way, a popular, a popular trip. Um, this is one where if we see fa uh, families take, a lot of them will take a trip like this or the next trip that we're going to talk about, which is the Empire Builder with Glacier National Park, and uh, using um, uh, another, another, popular, another popular trip with, uh, with uh, families. So let's move on to clear these off. Let me pop back a little bit here for a second because I believe we were at the Empire Builder with Glacier National Park. Now, uh, this is again is an independent trip uh, and very popular. At the Glacier National Park, if you go on to uh, vacationsbyrail.com, uh, you're going to find that there are a lot of trips that include Glacier National Park. And the reason being is that it's so convenient to take the train to Glacier National Park. So whether on this independent trip, you know, Vacations by Rail makes all the reservations for you, books the train, books the hotel accommodations, provide you vouchers. You board the train uh, in Chicago. Um, you could also board it in Seattle or anywhere in between. And you then, uh, stay, starting out of Chicago, you do the overnight. It's about 30, 
32 hours or so uh, to Glacier Park. On this particular trip, you arrive in the evening at Glacier Park. You go right across, as I mentioned, to the Glacier Park, uh, Glacier Park Lodge. You spend one night there. Then you're transferred to Many Glacier, uh, Many Glacier uh, Lodge on Swift Current Lake. And you'll spend two nights there. And you'll do the Crown of the Continent Tour, which is the Red Jammer Bus. It is now going to take you over the Going to the Sun Road. Uh, and you'll see all those places that we've talked about. You're going to see um, Lake McDonald, uh, Logan, pa uh, Logan Pass. So you're going you're to go over the Continental Divide. Um, it's really an amazing trip on the Red Jammers. And, um, you know, it's great when, that, when, that, uh, when they have the, 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 the top rolled back. And, and it's great for, like I said, you can't take a bad picture here. And so you'll do that trip. Um, you'll also be able to do the uh, boat across Swift Current Lake with the short hike. That's included. And then, so you, then you go back to Glacier National Park. Uh, you go to Glacier Park Lodge. And, you, um, and then you'll spend the night, and then the next day you'll take the train. And if you're, it depends on what time you're going to go. If you're heading back towards Chicago, um, you would board the train and in the morning. And if you're going to head, again, with the Empire Builder all the way through, do that entire route uh, through the Cascade Mountains on to Seattle, you will then um, board in the evening when that, when that train from Chicago comes through Glacier National Park uh, to pick people up. I think we have one last one uh, I might have just kind of skipped through, and I want to cover that real quick. It's an escorted tour. Uh, and again, it showcases the, um, it showcases how you can piece all these, these national parks together uh, with either an escorted tour or an independent trip. And as you've looked at these maps and how the trains uh, all fit together to connect these national parks, you, you, as you look at them, you can customize these. So if it's an independent trip and you want to you want to do a couple of different things, you can call our rail specialists and they'll be able to tailor make these to to your particular needs, and uh, and give you some and give you some guidance as to is that the best way to do it or what they found from feedback from our, from our clients, and make sure that you're doing uh, the trip that makes the most sense sense for you and uh, is, is 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 well planned. So on this particular trip. Um, this is a really interesting and popular trip, America's Great National Parks, because what we're going to do now is we're actually going up into Canada. So you're doing three nights at Glacier Park. You're going to go up to Waterton Lakes National Park. Um, if you've ever seen the uh, Prince of Wales uh, Hotel, which is an iconic hotel, um, it looks like it almost sits right, uh, it's right on the water. You'll, you um, wish I had a photo I could show you right now, because uh, I'm sure all of you have seen this picture. Um, so you do the overnight on the Empire Builder, Three Nights Glacier Park, National Park, where you do the Going to the Sun Road, um, and you venture down to, then you motor coach to Yellowstone, do two nights Yellowstone National Park uh, in the park, and that's a key differentiation point because, um, uh, you know, there's people have, op there's options. You can stay in the park or out of the park. We bring our groups in the park uh, to stay at some of the uh, lodges and hotels in the park. Uh, Grand Teton National Park. Uh, and then two nights in Jackson, down to Salt Lake City. And then from Salt Lake City, we go and we do Arches, Dead Horse State Park, Canyonlands, and Moab. And we then board the train. Uh, generally, uh, we're doing it now out of um, Grand Junction to get people back to uh, through the Colorado Rockies, uh, then the overnight portion uh, from Nebraska into Iowa, and then into Chicago again. So again, you can see the number of national parks that we're hitting here. Uh, with a combination of the rail travel that takes you right to the national parks and then the motor coach, motor coach options uh, on the escorted tour that's guided all the way through these other national parks. You can really, um, really experience this amazing part of the country um, that, and also see the country as you're going out there. And I think that's really one of the reasons people choose to take rail travel to these national parks because it seems to tie it all together. It seems to take the... Uh, the scenery and uh, that the scenery and what the United States has to offer all the way through from the beginning. And you know, we have some some world class cities like Chicago, and then you leave, and then you get to see and really get the feeling and how big the the United States is. I think when you're going by train, um, the journey is part of your 
the journey really is part of your vacation experience. And when you take the train, it get, you really get to get that feeling of, of a journey, of a great journey, and you get the feeling of how, uh, how, vast, um, how vast this country really is. So let's, uh, let me ask this last question and see if I was able to drive any of the points home here about what it's uh, about, about taking, uh, taking the train and see if you guys pick up on, uh, pick up on any of these, uh, pick up on some of the information that we provided here. So we're going to open up the polls one more time for a quick question. Here it is. Of the three trains, we talked really about the total of five trains I think we touched on today. We t touched on the California Zephyr, the Empire Builder, the Southwest Chief. We also talked about the Coast Starlight, which is a, one, of the, uh, one of the great scenic routes in the country as well. The one goes between the LA and Seattle. And we also talked a little bit about the Grand Canyon Railway. But the question I have for you is, which train goes to Glacier National Park? Is it the California Zephyr, the Empire Builder, or the Southwest Chief? All right. This is what I'd like to see. This is going to be the question that shows if I've done my job. All right. It looks like it's it. 100% of you have guessed the California Zephyr in, uh, I'm sorry, the Empire Builder. 100% of you have guessed the Empire Builder. And, um, and now uh, I feel like I have done my job here, and that is to tell you how you can get to these national parks by train. Um, and I'm just going to run through them real quick, and I'm going to talk to you about a couple other Canadian uh, Canada's National Park that you can reach by train. But really, um, you have your three main trains heading out of Chicago. You have the Empire Builder, you have the California Zephyr, and you have the Southwest Chief. And these trains are going to take you, uh, are be the easiest connections to places like Glacier National Park, Yellowstone, the Grand Canyon. And if you're going to take, if you want to go to Yosemite, uh, you generally take, um, on, a, on a long distance train, you're going to take uh, the Coast Starlight to San Francisco, and you can do a connection out of there to Yosemite. Uh, the other thing that we have is we have a couple of other rail drive packages that we've opened up that are more extensive uh, where we connected a train up with these itineraries that allow you to explore the Pacific Northwest and some of those fabulous national parks and, and uh, scenic wonders. Uh, and um, so you should explore those as well if you're, if you're a more independent traveler. The United States is not the only place with, uh, with amazing national parks. Canada obviously is an amazing, uh, amazing national park destination with the Canadian Rockies and Banff. Jasper and Yoho National Parks, all things that we can do with uh, train, whether it's escorted or independent. So whether you're talking about Via Rail's overnight service on the iconic Canadian, which is really the train that goes between Vancouver and Toronto, um, you can you can uh, take that train as an overnight train up to Jasper, and then we, we uh, get you the scenic transfers or car rentals that get you down into those national parks. Or if you're uh, going to do the Rocky Mountaineer, which is... Uh, all daylight train through the Canadian Rockies, which will take you to Banff, which will take you to Jasper, which will take you um, up to uh, Quinella and more of a, a northwestern route. Um, but we can handle all of those for you to get you to Jasper, Banff, and Yoda and, and get you the, the sightseeing and the touring experience that you're looking for. See if there's any questions here. And I will uh, uh, see if I can answer a couple of questions and then uh, we'll wrap this up. I'm going to. Uh, Oh, let me uh, see what questions we have here. One moment, and uh, let's see here. How many passengers are on the train? Now, that's a great question because uh, you're talking uh, 175 plus passengers generally uh, on these trains, on these Amtrak trains. Um, but you know, you have people getting on and off throughout. These are Amtrak trains are regular, regular, uh, uh, regular uh, service for a lot of people across the country. It, uh, it provides transportation to areas of the country that 
uh, is not accessible by other forms of transportation such as, um, such as airlines. So for a lot of people, this is regular transportation uh, between, um, f for them. So, uh, but on the tours, on the tours, I, um, you're talking 40, uh, 40 up to 52 passengers on a tour. So um, the amount of people on an Amtrak train varies throughout the journey. And during high season, they could add additional cars. Or low season, they might take away cars. So, but I will say this, that sleeping accommodations, particularly in the summer months, they do sell out. So we always encourage people to, uh, to, um, to book early. So let's see what else. Uh, we have any other questions. If anybody else has any other questions, um, do the hotel accommodations change based on train accommodations? Well, um, yes and no. Uh, we have trips that include uh, superior accommodations, deluxe accommodations, and those can change uh, in the particular package if you're going to have a different type of sleeping accommodation. But let's say, for example, you wanted to have a moderate accommodation in the cities, but you wanted to spend your money on the upgrade for the train, for the sleeping accommodation on the train. That's not a problem. It can all be mixed and maxed, matched. Um, but when you're on an escorted tour, uh, the hotels are already pre-selected for the, for the group. And it does not matter which accommodation you ch which you're, that you're on. Um, what you'll find a lot of times is that this, this question, do hotel accommodations change based on train accommodations, it, it, it's typically more, um, uh, you'll see that in the Canadian uh, Rockies a lot, where you have uh, the packages may include a specific hotel accommodation and gold leaf service on the train in a Rocky Mountaineer. Um, but again, if you want to do it a certain way, it's no problem. Just talk to our rail specialists and they can help you out. Ava, how far in advance should I book my rail vacation question? This is a great question as well. Um, I would say that if you know you want to go, right, that um, you should book it in far advance as possible because it's all about availability on the train. If you're going to be traveling in the summer months, and particularly into September and early October, uh, as you get into fall time, which is a very popular time to travel, the sooner you book, the sooner you'll get the dates you want, and the sooner you will get um, uh, you'll get your you'll be able to get your rail accommodations. The other part is that if you're going to a place like Glacier National Park, um, those because of the limited season, uh, this limited season about 100 days or so, and the popularity of the particular national park. If you want to stay at places like Med Glacier Lodge or the uh, Glacier uh, Glacier Park Lodge, then you're going to want to book those as soon as you can. And we're able to start taking reservations uh, uh, for some 2015 trips already. We uh, take reservations, and then when space comes available, we go and we grab that space. Um, and then, um, but you're going to start seeing 2015 trips already starting to be shown uh, over from now uh, uh, through the next uh, month or so. They're going to all start becoming available. So let's see if I have any other questions. Making reservations for train travel not going to national parks. That's not, that's not, a, that's not a problem because um, vacations by rail, we handle, um, we do, you can call our rail specialists and they can help you out with any of your uh, rail travel needs to places, uh, to cities as well. So if you want to go to, um, just to take the Empire Builder to Seattle, no problem. We can assist you with that. So. Um, our, our agents are here to assist. I would just call them up and ask them um, what, uh, uh, give them some information on what, they, they, uh, what you'd like to do, and they'll see if they can assist you. Let's see if there's any other questions here. Last question I, can, uh, I think we have time for here is, we want to go to the middle of July to August. Is it too late to make a reservation on an independent trip? I would say it is not too late to make a reservation. We have people making reservations up until the, uh, we've had them a, a week before, 10 days before. I think the key here is to, um, is, is to have a little bit of flexibility. So if you want to go in July, if you're saying, I need to start on July 17, for example, um, you might have some challenges getting some of the availability on the train. So if you want a bedroom accommodation to um, the California effort in July, um, it, you might need to have a little bit of flexibility 
on the date that you start your trip. So that's the only thing. As you get closer in, um, the, the more challenging it is to find, to find, uh, to find space. So uh, let's see if there's anything else. Um, and then we will wrap this up. Uh, okay. Um, I think that answers uh, most of the questions. You can always uh, feel free to send an email to info at vacationsbyrail.com. That's info at vacationsbyrail.com. And uh, we, can, uh, we can respond to your questions that way. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to tell you is um, you should contact our rail specialists uh, directly. They're available and very helpful in planning any of these trips. Uh, and when you do, uh, make sure if you make a reservation, let them know that you've attended our National Parks by Rail webinar. Uh, we're pleased to offer you $25 per person off your next trip when you mention the promo code NPWEBINAR14 at the time of reservation. And if you're an AARP member, uh, you can combine that $25 uh, $25 uh, discount per person with your AARP uh, member benefit. Um, the one other thing I want to show you real quick, I know I keep saying one other thing, but uh, this I think is uh, just a real important uh, thing to look at. Uh, it's on our website. We've talked a lot about national parks, and if you go to our website, uh, www.vacationsbyrail.com, um, you, uh, you start searching through and we have all sorts of trips. But one of the easy things for you to do is if you go to United States, for example, uh, and just hover over the United States, you're going to see all these different vacation types. Just go to National Parks. Click on National Parks. It's going to pull up all the different National Parks. And what I would recommend doing is just saying, show me 100 results, if you want to just kind of scroll through those, or show me 50 results. I think we have... Uh, well over 50 trips here, but this is going to bring them all up on one screen so that you can just just scroll down, right? Scroll down and look at the different names, uh, look at the different descriptions, and we can take you from Alaska uh, and Denali National Park, Yosemite, um, Yellowstone, Glacier National Park, they're all there. We can combine these rail uh, trips with the Alaska, with Alaska cruise. Um, so there's a lot to see and a lot to do and a lot to experience. And when you go to vacationsbyrail.com, we've tried to make it as simple for you as possible to sort through all these trips. So that's what I would do. Go and use the vacation categories. You can even see these here on the left-hand side. Uh, and, but particularly when you hover off, the, uh, hover off on the map, Canada too, it's going to put these into groupings that make, make the most sense. Sounds like someone's just unmessed. You can't see the browser. Um, hopefully that has helped. If not, um, I just recommend going to vacations, uh, vacationsbyrail.com, and, uh, and just you'll see when you go to the United States, uh, you'll be able to see uh, the different national, the different categories. It's right off the navigation bar on the top. So again, call our rail specialists and mention the promo code. And I want to thank everybody for attending and, and listening so in, in, intently and responding to the polling questions. If you have any other questions, feel free to call us at 877-929-7245. Uh, send us an email at info at vacationsbyrail.com. And we look forward to planning, helping you plan your next uh, vacation, your next rail vacation. Thank you.